We are back for part two of our new Technology Highlights podcast series at the American Urologic Association's annual meeting in Chicago, Illinois. This week, we'll be taking you behind the scenes, highlighting some of the new and upcoming technology for an enlarged prostate, or benign prosthetic hyperplasia, BPH. You will definitely want to stay tuned for this episode. And we'll get right into it as soon as we get back from thanking our episode sponsor today. As we enter into a new frontier of testosterone replacement therapy, there is now a convenient, safe, and effective option with Kaizatrex that can be taken in pill form, allowing patients another option other than messy gels, painful injections, or surgically implanted pellets. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On the podcast, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. Over the past several years, there continues to be an explosion of new and innovative treatment options for men with bothersome BPH symptoms. I'm going to tell you right now that there are even more options yet to come with numerous new technologies still coming down the pipeline, which will be soon available in the coming months ahead. Today, you'll be getting a sneak peek at several of these new technologies. This year, I was able to comb the exhibition hall at the American Urologic Association annual meeting for our listeners, with our last episode focusing on new technology in the diagnosis and treatment of prostate cancer. This week, I'll be focusing on highlights regarding some of the new and upcoming technology for BPH, including interviews with several representatives of the highlighted companies, as well as a urologist using the technology. While I will only be able to highlight a few of the fan favorites at the conference, I promise that I will continue to be keeping you up to speed on some of the other technologies as well throughout the course of this next year on the podcast. So our first stop is at the Optilum BPH booth today. Optilum BPH immediately caught my attention as I am already utilizing Optilum in my practice for managing urethral strictures, which utilizes a drug-coated balloon for the treatment of urethral stricture disease combining mechanical dilation for immediate symptomatic relief, along with local drug delivery to maintain long-term urethral patency. So Optilum BPH is a new treatment option for benign prosthetic hyperplasia, which is one of those technologies still coming down the pipeline, but will be soon available. We'll be talking with Ian Shorn today, Vice President of Clinical Affairs at Eurotronic, about the use of Optilum in the management of BPH. Ian, can you tell us a little bit about Optilum for BPH? Sure. So the technology is actually, it's a drug-coated balloon catheter that is used to create an anterior commissurotomy between the two lateral lobes of the prostate. And so the unique thing about this device is it's actually the first minimally invasive therapy that combines both a mechanical or a device mechanism of action with a drug-related mechanism of action. So the device, the mechanical aspect, creates that anterior commissurotomy, gives you some immediate symptom relief, and then the drug is intended to maintain that relief long-term. And as a urologist, we're always looking to technologies that could potentially be done in the office setting from the standpoint of improved efficiency, but also less cost to the patient. And is this a technology that you foresee would be available and to be able to be performed in the office setting? Yeah, so we've done a few cases under periprostatic block, which was done in the office. Some people have talked about using it with nitrous oxide to help with some of the pain management too. But yeah, definitely something that can be used in the office or you know whatever your place of practice is. So this sounds like a pretty exciting technology. And when we talk about availability to urologists, when will would this be available to patients and urologists to provide for BPH? So right now we are considered an investigational device or technology. We're currently under review by the FDA for market approval, which we do expect in the summer of 2023 here. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time. Uh, any parting thoughts today for our listeners? We're really excited to bring this technology to market. I think it fits a very big need where there's minimally invasive options out there that have 
pros and cons that go along with it. And this is a device that we've seen with our clinical data that has really good outcomes as far as flow rate improvement after treatment. And so it's kind of one of those options that can fill a need and really improve some of the functional outcomes after the treatment with BPH. I am very excited about getting my hands on this new technology, and it will be a procedure that can be performed in the office setting. I'm told that they are hoping for official FDA approval in July of this year, just several months away. How it works again is it utilizes a double low balloon to perform mechanical dilation to achieve an anterior commiserotomy, providing an immediate open channel. And I quote Eurotronic President and CEO David Perry, the secret sauce is the drug coating on the balloon with the drug paclitaxel, which helps maintain an open lumen during healing. Dr. Stephen Kaplan presented four years of data this week at the AUA meeting, and the results were quite impressive. Optilum achieved the highest average peak urinary flow rate at 12 months compared to all other randomized mistrials for BPH. The peak flow rate more than doubled from 8.9 milliliters per second at baseline to 19 milliliters per second at 12 months after treatment. Durability was shown through four years of follow-up. Also, there was no change in erectile and ejaculatory function scores. We are already planning a dedicated episode for Optilum BPH coming up in the future here in the podcast, so make sure to keep an eye out for the episode. There is a new era of stent devices now emerging for BPH, with numerous options now coming down the pipeline. There is certainly variability among the devices, including the design. Some are quite thin and minimalistic, while others are more rigid and sturdy. There are some that are designed to be left in permanently, while others to be removed after a period of time. Now, time will tell in terms of which ones rise to the top in terms of outcomes and urologist preference. I think some of it will have to do with device cost versus reimbursement, how easy it is to place the stent, can it be easily removed. For those that are more permanent, how will this affect the quality of multiparametric prostate MRI and the detection of prostate cancer? And will we see any issues with stent migration or encrustation? Some of the systems to include Zenflow spring system, Itin by Olympus, Proverum Pro-V Expander, Flow Stent System by Rivermark Medical, Omega by ProArc Medical, and Butterfly Medical, many of which are still in the investigational stages and not yet FDA approved in the U.S. Now, the Itin device is FDA approved in the U.S., but still waiting on a dedicated physician reimbursement CPT code. To give our listeners a look at one of these options that will be available in the future, we're going to take you by the Butterfly Medical booth to speak with Edon Giva, CEO of Butterfly Medical. So we will get right into the interview here. Could you tell our listeners a little bit about your technology? Yeah, absolutely. So what we've developed is a, what we consider as a next generation minimally invasive treatment for BPH, which is a nitinol implant that is designed to feed the anatomy of the prostate and retract the lateral lobes of the prostate. And what's uh, unique about it, it's a very simple procedure, very intuitive for every urologist. All you need is a 22 French cystoscope, five to seven minutes, and you have the device in the prostatic urethra and dilating the lateral lobes. So a lot of our listeners are also men and their loved ones. And from a patient perspective, how does this compare to some of the other technologies that are out there? and, And why should a patient consider this when it's available? Very good question. Obviously, the market's is huge and there are solutions all around. And obviously, when you talk about a minimally invasive treatment, the one or two things that come to mind are your lift and resume. And I think what makes us a second generation uh, treatment are basically two aspects. One is that we're less invasive. We don't need to puncture the tissue or burn or cut into the tissue, uh, which makes the procedure faster and simpler and the recovery uh, faster and simpler. The other aspect is the reversibility. Because we don't do any tissue damage and the way the device is designed, it's very easy to take it out anytime, whether it's a week or a few years after the procedure. So as you know, in BPH, we're treating quality of life and you can never reach 100% of satisfaction, especially with men. So uh, in that case, some patients will always come back unhappy with the results and we can offer them the opportunity to take it out, to reverse the treatment and do anything else. So next, we'll be moving on to another new technology, one in which I am currently utilizing in my practice. But before that, we're going to take a quick break here to thank today's episode sponsor, Marius Pharmaceuticals. But then we'll be right back to finish out the episode. Until recently, our options for testosterone replacement therapy have involved modalities including messy gels, painful injections, 
and surgically implanted pellets. Men are now excited to finally have a comprehensive option with Kaizatrix that is convenient, safe, and effective. When I talk with patients, most would rather just take a pill with their daily meds and or supplements, particularly considering some of the drawbacks with prior options, including taking a pill doesn't involve a needle causing pain, and there is no risk of transference to someone coming in contact with your skin, like you have with the gels. Make sure to ask your physician about Kaizatrix, and to learn more, just go to kaizatrix.com. All right, well, thanks again to our episode sponsor today, and we'll get right back into wrapping up BPH technology highlights at the AUA annual meeting. So lastly, we made a stop by the Procept booth where I was able to chat with Dr. Lewis Kreitman, a urologist at Georgia Urology who offers aquablation in his practice. So I thought we could just talk a little bit about our listeners today about maybe your experience with aquablation, but I'm, first of all, can you just tell our listeners what is aquablation? So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to your listeners, but aquablation is the newest procedure, resective procedure that we have available to treat men with benign prostatic hyperplasia with BPH. It combines ultrasound imaging with a high pressure water jet and robotic control to open up a channel through the prostate to allow patients to void better and help them with their lower urinary tract symptoms. And you and I both utilize this technology in our practice, but how has it helped your patients in comparing it to some of the procedures you had before you implemented aquablation and how has it really helped your patient population? Yeah, that's a good question. It's We really haven't had any technology that allows us to visualize the prostate at the same time that we're actually removing tissue. And so, as I mentioned earlier, the combination of ultrasound guidance with a robotic removal of tissue is the safest way for us to treat our patients, gives them the benefits of removing the most tissue that we could remove, but in a safe manner. And that's really what's changed. We can do it safely. We can protect certain areas of the prostate that are vital for men from a sexual standpoint, for an ejaculatory standpoint, and also from a continent standpoint. So, you know, unlike some of the other resective procedures that we do, these patients do exceedingly well from avoiding those side effects. Well, any parting thoughts today for our listeners? If you have benign prostatic hyperplasia, if you have voiding symptoms, I would absolutely talk to your urologist about being worked up appropriately and seeing if you're a good candidate for this procedure. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. So we brought aquablation into our practice, performing our first few cases in January of 2022. I was the first urologist in the seven-state region, including Nebraska, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Montana, Wyoming, and Colorado, to offer aquablation. After this next month, I will have performed over 100 aquablation procedures. My impression so far is that patients do quite well, are seeing a significant improvement in their urinary symptoms, and have been happy to avoid the sexual side effects that come with some of the other BPH interventions. Well, I'm very excited to continue to see ongoing innovation with the available technology and techniques used in the management of BPH. Again, this is certainly just a teaser of some of the new and upcoming technologies emerging here at the AUA annual meeting. As we move forward, I'll continue to highlight the new advances for BPH on future episodes of the podcast. So make sure to subscribe to the podcast and we'll keep you in the loop. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. For those of you wanting to dive in even deeper, make sure to check out the Prostate Health Academy, which offers comprehensive and easy to navigate lessons that I have prepared for you. There's also an active private community forum, and I am there every day providing support, insight, and answering questions. To learn more, just go to www.prostatehealthacademy.com and click on join now. Well, that's it for today. We will see you at the next episode. Thank you.